Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap special event. Today, uh, we're going through Bookmap traders. Uh, we have Brett Mayo, a stocks trader. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, stock strategies and finding trades. So, Brett has been trading uh, or began his trading career swing trading options before making the transition to day trading uh, and scalping stocks and options. Uh, he concluded day trading was a safer form of trading since it uh, avoided the overnight risk. Uh, Brett offers a trading course uh, with his own uh, strategies and indicators. All right, so let's go through some risk disclosures before we get into the presentation. So know what you're getting involved with here. All bookmap limited, limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So if you're in here, Brett, are you here? Uh, then uh, let's turn it over to you and uh, let you take it away. Hey, thank you, Bruce. Appreciate, uh, appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna share my screen here. Just let me uh, let me know whenever everything pulls up. Yep, yeah, I got it. Okay, you got it. Okay, all right. Appreciate that. Well, again, Bruce, appreciate uh, appreciate the introduction. Uh, with that in mind, um, appreciate everyone that showed up today. Just wanted to take some uh, take some time and uh, just share some uh, some strategies um, that I've uh, that I've found in my time of using a uh, book map. Uh, as most of you know, Bookmap is, is an amazing tool. Um, when I first found it, it was I knew it was something special, but the reality was I just didn't really know how to use it with a high probability of success. So anyway, so that put me uh, that put me on a uh, a quest to really understand it, and uh, yeah, just uh, used Bookmap day after day, live trading, and uh, really just started seeing the correlations between. Uh, between stocks and the liquidity, and I was, and, and in time, I uh, I came up with the uh, found the strategies that I now use that uh, that give uh, that have given me a, a very very high probability uh, win rate. With that said, Bookmap can allow you to become an, a very very efficient trader uh, if you allow it to uh, if you allow it. So, with that said, first things first, uh, whenever trying to Take advantage of Bookmap. Uh, if you can see here, I got Home Depot pulled up. Um, one of the first things to keep in mind, if you're looking, if there's a particular stock that you're interested in early in the day, um, one thing to always keep in mind is to take a peek at it in the pre-market and see where your major liquidity, the majority of your major liquidity is at. Because understanding that the market gravitates to large areas of liquidity is just, it's just basic basic understanding of basic structure of the market. The market is always going to be wanting to move, stay liquid, and it's going to gravitate to these large levels of liquidity. Now, you might ask, what defines a large level of liquidity? Well, that's the awesome thing about Bookmap. Bookmap allows you to see the large levels of liquidity, buyers and sellers, on the heat map. So with that said, as you most of you know, I'm sure most of you know here, you got your price increments on here on the side. Now, some, you know, they may define it differently, but for me and my trading and my strategies, what I've found is large levels of liquidity are defined as something you can see on the five, five dollar increment. When I can see, when I can see something on the five dollar, the five dollar increments, then it qualifies as a large level of liquidity. And I understand that the market wants to gravitate to large levels of liquidity. So here, we're here with uh, Home Depot this morning. We see the majority of liquidity was to the upside. So for me, that tells me immediately my bias, my bias to the day would be to the upside. And of course, once the day starts, then then I'll uh, I'll get more precise. So with that said, we'll uh, I'll zoom in here to the start of the day. And my bread and uh, my bread and butter strategy, and again, this I got this in the uh, it's in my my server. We have the entries and exits on it. Over 500, 500 entries and exits using this strategy um, so far that I've shared with um, with ones. With that said, what we're doing for this strategy is we're we're pinpointing the large level of liquidity. Once the day starts, the liquidity comes in the book 
After a few minutes, it finally starts getting clear. We can see all the major levels. And in this case, HD, your Home Depot was a prime example of that. So in this case, as you can see, this 315, and just to be able to qualify it, is it a large level of liquidity? Well, look, go to the $5 increments. Where's our largest level of liquidity? This 315 to 316 area. So with that in mind, we are biased is that one HD is going to push to it. And then once it pushes to it, when you get to a major level of liquidity like this, there will be profit taking every single time. So the idea that we take advantage of with Bookmap is to when others are taking profit, we're we are shorting where they're taking profit. So we're making profit when they're making profit. So the idea is we've identified these major levels and when, once it gets there, then we're going to play we're going to play a, a pullback from that area. Usually on average it's anywhere from 2 to $5 is the is the sweet spot that we're looking for on a uh, on a pullback at major major liquidity. And again, these setups are all throughout the market every single day and I'll show you in a little bit a little how I go about identifying them and finding them within the day because it's one thing to find a play after the fact or identify it after the fact is a whole nother thing to be able to find it in live time. So that's another another area where we we excel at is finding plays intraday uh, before before they get to these major levels. And uh, that way we can get in, get into them, be ready to uh, enter and then take advantage of it. So anyway, so with that said, we see a prime example here. HD at the start of the day, 310 runs straight to this monster liquidity here at 315. And as soon as we get there, we proceed to dump all the way back to 312. Uh, nice, uh, nice two dollar and fifty cent dump there. Back to the VWAP. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is there's no major liquidity that came back in below. So what that tells me is all the major liquidity is still above. There's none coming in below. So this stock wants to go right back to all this major liquidity. Because again, stocks are like uh, stocks are like hungry. Uh, you know, they're uh, they're very hungry. They're wanting to feed their belly on liquidity. So that's where yeah, that's where they're going to gravitate towards. Because uh, the market is it's a machine. It's always looking to eat up eat up more liquidity. So with that said, comes down here hits the hits the book map uh, VWAP. We get our nice bounce. Comes right back up into this liquidity. Uh, 316 liquidity gets yeah added big time and then proceeds to dump once again. Again, there's no major liquidity below. There's a little bit that came in here at 310 and 310, 311 range, but nothing significant. But with that said, it's able to hold it. And again, where does it go? Runs right back up to this major liquidity here at 315, 316. And then finally, finally, we see at this point in the day, we finally absorb all of that liquidity. Now, keep in mind, when, when liquidity is absorbed, as you can see here, it disappears. That doesn't automatically mean, well, it's to the moon from there. That just means that all that liquidity has, has been absorbed and now ultimately the stock has to digest it. So with that said, we can see HD's case, it ended up dumping uh, once again. And then more liquidity came back in, 316 pumps back to it. Again, the key here is no major liquidity yeah, no major liquidity came back in below. So there was nothing to pull this stock down really hard for the rest of the day unless the overall market just started dumping really, really hard. So with that said, that's uh, that's an example there on HD. Um, let me uh, let me give you another one uh, that uh, was a nice, uh, nice setup today. Goldman Sachs GS. And very similar, very similar to HD today. We get to the open today and of course the first, like I always tell my traders, the first 15, 15 to 30 minutes of the day, you got to realize there's a lot of orders that have to be processed. So you get a lot of whipping back and forth, but you'll, you'll get to see the liquidity will start coming in pretty clear and you'll be able to discern what's going on. And we see with uh, Goldman Sachs GS here comes down. We have some buyers that come in in this 337, 338 area. They push it up. And then again, going back to what is major liquidity, again, we see here at 345, this was our major biggest level of liquidity on the day. So we're looking, our bias is for a push to that liquidity. And then when we get to that liquidity, there's going to be easy profit money 
um, at the down, you know, on the pullback to it. So again, we're not expecting, you know, monster, you know, we're not saying it's going to go all the way back to the low of the day. We just know that there's going to be the averages of, you know, a two, a two to five dollar uh, dump off of that major liquidity is push up to it. We get close to it here at 344. The first, uh, the first test of it pulls all the way back to 4250, pushes back to it, dumps off of it again, pushes, dumps off of it again, pushes back to it, dumps again. So again, you can, you can see here that multiple opportunities to make some very quick, easy money off of these, off of this major level Major level of liquidity and is we see it the day gone. It was it goes. It was never able, never able to um, absorb that liquidity. And because again, the only way it goes higher than this is if this liquidity is absorbed. That's the only chance it ever has. You're never going to see a situation where a stock just keeps going and the liquidity doesn't disappear. It's always, always going to disappear. And maybe next time, whenever I come back on, we'll go over go over another one of our powerful strategies, which is uh, momentum, playing stuff to uh, the upside and the continuation. Uh, but today, I'm just going to focus on on our short scalping strategy at major uh, major liquidity. So another prime example here. Now you might be asking, as far as how do I go about entering this? Well, we use options or shares, just depending on the stock. And then what we're doing, <clears throat> what we're doing is we're we're always looking to enter our positions just below or just in front of the major liquidity. If you put your order, if you try to put your orders in the middle of liquidity, on the backside of liquidity, you're going to get left at the altar a lot of times. So you have to have your orders right here on the front side of this major liquidity. And if there's front running liquidity, a lot of times what you'll have is you'll see one dollar below the major liquidity. You'll see you'll see some you know, significant liquidity. Now, if you can see it on the $1 increments, if you can see liquidity in this case on the $1 increment ahead of your major liquidity, more times than not, they're going to front run it for an initial dump. So what it'll do, it'll, it'll initially dump. And then what it'll do is it'll come right back and retest the major liquidity. So stuff like this allows us to double dip on play. So prime example here, 344, it dumps off of it, dumps all the way back to 4250. And again, we're always quick we're always quick to take the profit on something like this because we know nine out of 10 times it's going to go right back to the major liquidity and test it. So again, this is just front running liquidity. We always like to identify it because again, it gives us an opportunity to get two plays out of one play. So, and also too, we usually average, um, we usually average about anywhere from four, about four to five of these uh of these plays a day because again they're they're very easy to find they're a lot easier to find than your continuation or momentum uh momentum trades in my opinion so uh one more example here and then i'll start to start answering anybody's questions um let's uh what was another nice one today um car car was a good one um so played car in it went extremely well. Now this is a lower float stocks stock. So this one, uh, and again, this works on any any size stock. Um, it's just for me. I've I prefer to play you know the mid and large caps. Um, I don't personally. I don't like to mess with the 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 smaller uh, smaller stuff more times than not. I uh, yeah. Uh, I like I like the bigger bigger stuff. A lot of liquidity um, moves moves really nicely. So with that said, car was another nice example today. Uh, again, identifying major liquidity. We do that by the five dollar increments. All right. So we see we got major liquidity here, major liquidity here, and also here. So that's our levels that we're looking for the for this stock to push to. And then we know when it gets there, it's more than likely going to give us some nice. Some very easy pullback money. So, with that said, uh, actually, our first level of the day was right here at 300. Ends up pulling all the way back to 295. And again, that's within our two to two to five dollar profit target that we're looking for. Finally, pushes, gets support on the VWAP, pushes back up to 305. Another major level, pulls back to 299. So, a nice uh, six dollar dump off of that liquidity. And then finally, it goes back up, absorbs that 305, 306 liquidity. We get support on it. Bam. Blast off. Our next major level being here at 320. This is, uh, this is actually when I found, scanned, and, scanned and found the play here at 320. Took advantage of it here. Got our dump all the way back down to 311 on this one. 
pushes right back to it. More liquidity comes in at 320. They dump it, make they dump it right back down. And then finally it gets back up there, absorbs 320 liquidity, pushes through the 325 liquidity, and then proceeds to dump uh, dump five or six dollars off of that and, and actually a lot more into the close. So with that uh, with that said, that's uh, yeah, that is the the backbone of this particular strategy. And again, like I said, these plays, you can find them all day long. Just yeah, it's extremely uh, extremely powerful. And um, honestly, it's it is by far my my favorite uh, of all the strategies that I've tried through the years. This one this one is my favorite because it is the highest probability. I mean, there's no there's no other strategy that I found that I found that's if you follow the simple uh, you know the simple rules of of this particular strategy. So, with that said, I just wanted to open it up to questions. Um, if anyone has any questions, I would be more than happy uh, more than happy to ask them. I don't know what uh, where they would be at, but uh, yeah, anyway, they'll, but uh, they'll be, um, yeah. Thank you, uh, Brett. Um, I, I have I've got a ton of questions for you. Um, okay, uh, yeah, go ahead. And uh, 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 anyone have any questions? Please put it. This is the special events. Uh, room, uh, so we have a equal, uh, uh, you know, the voice channel room, um, but there's an equal room there. So the hashtag special dash event, which is the text room, and that's where you guys can ask questions. Um, yeah, I have just all sorts of questions here. Like, uh, interesting strategy uh, that is just it's all about the liquidity and and the five dollar levels. Uh, but how, like this one, for example, here uh, with Avis. You know, what about the 310 level there? You know, was it because it was shorter term uh, liquidity that, I mean, did you short that as well uh, when it traded in no, the 310? No, no. So so this is a, on these lower float stocks, On a, I've learned with these lower float stocks that honestly the liquidity is not, you know, you get a lot of this, a lot of this kind of just all over the place liquidity. So with these, you have to be, and again, I always like to put the float, you know, the share float up just to identify if it's if it's one of those stocks. Um, so for me, whenever I'm dealing with something like this, I really a lower float stock like this. I really, really, really want to be conscious of making sure um, making sure it is very visible on the five dollar increment and just a big old thick, thick band of it. So, again, thick band here, like I said, this 320 area was really th thick. 325 was really, really thick. Because, uh, again, I want to use the heat map. I want the heat map to do the work for me. I don't want, you know, I, like I was telling Bruce uh, the other day, I rarely ever look at this COB over here at the actual number of orders. I mean, out of, out of you know, in my server, the, the 500 plus trades and the entries and exits, none of, <laughs> not one has been made based off, oh, okay, this, this has this many, you know, you know, this has many, this many, this many. No, no. I let the I let the heat map do the work for me. I'm, my whole idea is I want to have as simple a strategy, as simple and as powerful strategy as possible. And I want to be able to look at a, st a stock and identify immediately where the major levels are. So, and again, the heat map does that. I get on the five dollar increments, look for the you know the big thick orange red band, and bam, I know that's that's my major level that I'm looking for the stock to push to. And then when it gets there. Like I said, I, I know that I'm all but gar you know, guaranteed that I'm going to get some degree of pullback off of uh, off of that spot. So anyway, hope I made that clear the muddy water for you there, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no problem. So so then like, uh, OK, so you took you took a trade a short at. Um, uh, let's see here um, if you if you can go back. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was trying to get back. I was going to go to HD since it was clear, because like I said, it, I don't. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times most. I don't, uh, especially, uh, especially if you don't have the the account, because unfortunately, a lot of these lower float stocks, the options on it, because uh, ideally, we always like to find ones with options, because again, you know, these are, we're not in these plays for very long. So option decay is pretty much irrelevant. I mean, our average, the average time that we're in a play is anywhere from two, usually at most 20 minutes. So theta decay does not affect us whatsoever for this strategy. I mean, it is literally obsolete. Um, so with that, uh, with that said, you know, when you're dealing with a lower float stock, options are, you know, the bid ask is usually really, really wide. So we like to stick to share, you know, if we're going to play something like this, you, you're better off sticking to shares um, so you don't get taken advantage of on a, a really wide bid, uh, bid ask spread. So anyway, but like I said, my, my initial entry today 
my initial entry today was uh, was at three was at three twenty uh, on car. And again, you know, taking a few things in perspective, I I knew this stock had already ran already ran from you know down here at two two eighty five, and it already had hit a major level at three hundred. And of course, we got multiple rejections at that. So with that in mind, I mean, you're you know when you start running. 20, 30, 40 dollars. I mean, it's not a matter of if this thing's going to pull back, it's when it's going to pull back. So when you can find those major levels of liquidity after a stock has run really hard, because again, that's whenever I scan for stocks to find plays like this, that's all I'm looking. I'm looking at the biggest gainers for the day. You know, that that's the one that's the ones I want to find because that's the ones that have run really hard. And I know, I know that they're going to be running into some major liquidity. And when they do, when they do, they are going to probability they're going to give me some easy money whenever they get to them. So, anyway, so, so, so how, they made that. How, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's very clear um, on, on that. Um, I, I'm just, I'm curious though, how you manage the, the trade and, and like, especially uh, not, not so much, I mean, the stop loss, but the more about the pr uh, take profit and where do you, where do you uh, put those? Okay. So great question there. So when it comes to, when it comes to my take, uh, my take profit. So the basics of the strategy Tell you what, I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put also put up my other my other screen here with uh, with the actual uh, candlesticks if you don't mind. Um, that's okay, Bruce. Yeah, of course, sure, um, sure. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna change my screen and then have it to where y'all will be able to see. Y'all should be able to see my. Sh Okay. All right. If y'all don't mind, just let me know whenever y'all can see my trading view and yeah. book map beside it. Mm -hmm. You can see both of them? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Now, when it comes to my take profit, like I said, the, you know, the standard the standard is two, two to five dollars. That's that's our sweet spot. We know, like I said, I mean it's like I said, that we're gonna get a two any, anywhere from a two two to a five dollar pullback and again like one dollar pullbacks if you're somebody that just wants to get in there and play a quick one one to two dollar dump i mean that's that's free money all day long um but when it comes to you know trying to get trying to get two to five dollars out of it a lot of times our idea is we want to take half you know once we get our one to two dollar dump we want to take half of the position or three quarters of the position there and then if you want to hold a you know another you know a quarter or half of the position uh, position for a pullback to major liquidity below then hey, more more uh, more power more power to you. So this is a prime example here, we pushed up to three twenty five, and you know let's say you got in there and there's no there's really no liquidity that was visibly you could really visibly see until around four three fourteen. So again, if you want to hold a runner portion to either the VWAP or major you know the the major liquidity below, then that's fine. You can stay in the position as long as the liquidity is not absorbed. Once you, once this liquidity is absorbed. Once it pushes through it, absorbs it, and gets support on it, you are out of there. So that's why that's why our stop loss, our standard stop loss, is one dollar and fifty fifty five cents above the major liquidity. So in this case, you enter here just below one twenty five. Your stop's going to be at one twenty six fifty five. And again, why did we choose one one a dollar fifty five? Because I've seen it literally a gazillion times. Where in some instances, I'd say probably three out of 10 times, a stock will hit a major liquidity and it will automatically push through it $1, between $1 and $1.50, and then it will and it will come back and retest, it will co come back and retest the liquidity, when I say almost pretty much every single time, every single time. So that's why another thing I love about this strategy, it's there's never a situation where it's gonna hit this major liquidity and it's just, you know, bam to infinity and beyond and you know it's not gonna give you a chance to at least, you know, get your break even or something like that. So anyway, so that's one thing I really, really love about it is like I said, in the event that it does come up here, let's just say I picked a, you know, I picked a bad area to enter. Well, I know that once it absorbs this, because again, when it's it's a major level, the stock has to come back and show its support on it. So every single time, you know. You know, the guys will come in, the, you know, the, they're kind of skeptical at first, but after they see it happen time and time again in the, you know, three out of 10 times where it will absorb it on the first test, then we know that, you know, almost it's going to come back, retest, it'll push through, absorb it, come back, retest it, and it'll at least give us our break even if we want to take a break even 
um, or you know continue to hold it because there's a lot of instances where there's no major there's no major liquidity above this major level because that's another key thing too that that uh, that helps us because a lot of times what we'll do if there's no major liquidity above this level the 325 level in this case there was but if there's not a lot of times what we'll do is if we get a quick one dollar push through we'll actually add to the position on the one dollar push through because again we know that one is going to come back and retest it so it just gives us a better break even or it's going to you know allow us to make even money on even more money on the play when it uh when it you know dumps off of that major that major liquidity um so with that said as far as you know helping us to take profit uh we use algo levels um one of the things that we really really like is uh is algo levels and these are just computer uh computer levels that again computers a lot of computer trading that they trade off of and again these are if you can see over here on my chart these algo levels these lines right here they're on my chart they're automatically populated on the chart every single day so i don't have to put these on here they're automatically on here and as you can see um today car was a prime example prime you know prime example of how you could use these to take profit and myself that's exactly what i use today to take profit on this first entry on car so it pushes up here to 320 and again i know that more than likely more than likely i'm going to get a runner down here to this algo this three it was three eleven seventy algo so and pretty much that's exactly where i got it got out of there and uh, anyway so algos algo levels are something we really really like uh to use to be able to take advantage of um take advantage of pro uh, take profit levels because more times than not computers whenever they get to these levels they're going to bounce they're going to bounce off of them at least in the short term so uh so yeah we are all about using uh all about using these to take advantage of uh of take take profit levels so anyway hope that's uh hope that's clear for you bruce uh any other uh any other questions yeah yeah we got a few more questions in here uh and then um uh so looking at uh, uh that uh, example there that you, that you have in car um so you're you're front running the 325 uh so yeah. how, how are you kind of managing your entry on that Okay, so the entry, your entry is always, always, because again, you can't, it can't be in the liquidity, the orange line. Okay, so because again, like I said, I try to make it as easy as possible. Okay, you identify that, okay, this major liquidity is at 325. Now, your entry is going to be just below that, just below that. So you're looking at about anywhere from about 20 to 25 cents will get you in 90, I'd say 90 plays if you're within, you know, if you're 20 to 25 cents below that. So in this case, for 427 427.30 to 427.80 is where where you want to have that those options or those shares that's where you want to get the bulk of the the position filled um because if not yeah like i said you're you're going to be left you're going to be left um yeah missing out on some profit uh, you know a lot of the time because again that's what it, it I've just seen it <laughs> countless times. It it goes it'll go right up to it, just just to it, and then bam, bam, they dump it, uh, they dump it right, right up under right up underneath it. Like I said, 20, 20, 20 around twenty five cents um, is uh, like I said is usually the safe safe place uh, safe place to be in. Now, if you can get orders in, you know, five to ten cents away, um, you know, then that's hey more power to you. But just understand it: the closer you put you start the orders at the liquidity the more often you're going to you know you're going to be left left without an entry so again so that's our rule of thumb we want to be 20 20 around 20 to 25 cents um start our entries below the major liquidity all right excellent um so uh let's see here um a few different questions um uh, free driver sevens asking for a quick rundown of the rules. Maybe we'll go over that again um, in, in just a few minutes here. And, and uh, as a recap, uh, a free driver, um, a free diver, I'm sorry. Uh, and then uh, Barboza, um, uh, for this uh, short scalp strategy, do you take any longs as it pushes into the short level area? I, I was wondering the same thing. Uh, so you do you okay. trade it up to it as well. Yeah. So, so again, you, you never, ever, go long because uh, that's why i tell people that you know that people that love to play momentum uh play and hey and more power too i mean uh, you know everybody has their own you know things that match their personality and their trading style better um but with that said for when it comes to playing to the long side so let's just say hypothetically 
hypothetically, you got into um, – where was it a good spot today on major liquidity? Okay, prime example here. So this is my moment, my, min, my momentum strategy that I teach uh, teach ones that that like to play the momentum to the upside. You know, if they even though they all they all end up liking the easy money from uh, the short and at the major liquidity. If you like to play momentum here, you know here uh, here's the key. So again, this is on car. Like I said, it's clear clear whenever it's on a higher float stock. But anyway, so again, we see our initial we we see our initial test of three hundred five three hundred six. We dump off of it. Uh, five six dollars or seven dollars and then with that said it comes back to the vwap okay so again we always what i tell my guys we always know that when we're above the vwap there's going to be buyers at the vwap now are there going to be enough buyers there to hold it every single time no but we know there will be buying on a pullback to the vwap especially especially if there's no major liquidity but below the vwap if you don't have major liquidity below the vwap and you still have a bunch of liquidity above you're going to get a bounce of the VWAP always towards the major level of liquidity because we always keep that in when you're looking at a stock. Okay, you're always looking at, okay, where's the where's all the majority of liquidity? Is it above? Is it above where the price is right now? Is it up below? Um, so with that said, in this case, we, you know, we bounce the VWAP like happens so many times. And then once we do, we come back up because it absorbed it on the first retest. And then you can see here they tried to come back in. Well, it absorbs that very quickly. So what I tell my guys is when you get that absorption, when you come back to that major level of liquidity and you absorb that level and you start holding support candles, when you start getting support candles on that level, you get a support, you know, wick, you know, you'll see bottom wicks and stuff like that. When you start seeing that, that right there is your green light to play to the next major of liquidity. In this case, your next major level that you can see all the way across here was 320. So in this case, if you want to play your momentum to the upside, it's very simple. Once that major level of liquidity is, is absorbed, your entry is there. You're getting support on it. You're getting, again, support on it, comes off, bounces off of it, wicks off of it. That's your confirmation, entry there. And then your stop loss, your stop loss is going to be Depending on your, you know, in your <clears throat> your appetite for risk, uh, your stop loss is going to be anywhere from sixty cents to a dollar and fifty five cents below that entry. And then once you enter there, where where is your target? Your target is the next major level of liquidity, which in this case was three twenty. So that is an absolute take profit there. You don't mess around. I've seen too many guys give profit back. Why? Because one, they don't know about Bookmap, and then two, if they knew know about Bookmap. They're not taking profit at major levels of liquidity. You always, I mean, you always take your profit at major levels of liquidity. If you can see it on the $5 increment, it's a major level. So when it gets to that major level, you are taking profit just in front of it. And if you're smart, you're not only taking profit there, you're shorting there. Now, again, if you want to continue with the play, well, that's fine. You wait till the play proves that it can absorb that major level of liquidity. Once it absorbs that major level of liquidity, and you know it'll absorb it, absorb it, come back, find support on it. Here, let's see where it happened. Okay, so right here, 320, it finally absorbs it here. Finally absorbs it there. Gets above it, confirmation, bam, playing to the next major level. You're taking profit there. Why are you taking profit there? Because that's a major level of liquidity. Now, if 325 would have got absorbed, it had got absorbed and it came back, support on it, then bam, you re-enter again, you play to the upside. So with that said, you can, you know, with these two strategies, you know, the short scalping and then also to this momentum strategy, you can you can get so much money out of one stock if you know, if you know how to play it and you understand liquidity and how the market, you know, how the market reacts to liquidity. So Anyway, hope uh, hope I made that uh, made that clear for you, sir. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, crystal clear. Um, all right, so uh, let's see. Um, Cash X is asking uh, maybe you could review Tesla. Um, and okay, yeah, yeah. I actually talked to him earlier today about uh, about looking looking at Tesla. So, with that said, let's go to Tesla and oh, look at it, look at it in the aftermarket. Prime example here. Oh, let me get on the right. Uh, I usually like to be on the one or two minute candles. Okay, so let's just say hypothetically, I just want to cover it since it is earnings today. Let's just say hypothetically you were wanting to play earnings. Well, same way with like Netflix yesterday. 
poor souls that were trying to buy the dip on, on Netflix. Well, if they had Bookmap, they would have known they shouldn't have started buying the dip on Netflix until two, 250 to 255 or 256. Um, that's where I actually I actually played it in the aftermarket yesterday because I, that's where the major liquidity was. So I wasn't about to touch that thing with a 10 foot stick until there was major liquidity that came into the book to support it. So with that said, you can see here a Tesla in the aftermarket, you know, what Tesla, you know, got a nice FOMO pop all the way up here. And where does it, where is it, where does it stop pumping at the major level here? 230. This was your first major level of liquidity that you could see. And sure enough, Tesla, you know, it's dumped, you know, it dumped 30, 30 dollars off of uh off of that. So again, this, if I wouldn't have been doing this web, you know, webinar right now, I can guarantee you I would have been playing Tesla in this aftermarket and I would have identified this 1030 and I would have shorted Tesla off of it and made it some very quick, easy money. Um, but with that said, let me go into what it looked like during the day. Um Yes, it was a. If I'm not mistaken, it was a falling knife, from what I uh, from what I remember. Okay, all right. So this is Tesla. Let me get it over here all the way. All right, tell you what, I'm gonna have to load some more data here to be able to see the start of the day. Uh, with that said, whenever I was looking at Tesla earlier in the day, um, one thing to keep in mind. A lot of people, they get in a book map and they automatically want to play the catch the falling knife um, order book strategy. And I can tell you right now, that is not that is not a high probability strategy. So if you're someone that loves to buy the dip, that's fine. But you got to understand that when you're trying to catch a following falling knife, you only buy you only buy just in front of major levels of liquidity. You never ever want to buy in the middle of major liquidity. Prime example. Prime example would be. Um, uh, let me see here. This. Uh, oh, it's still loading. That's why. Um, prime example here would be 990. Major liquidity here at 990 and 980. Now, if you're buying the dip, let's say hypothetically you're somebody that loves Tesla and you wanted to buy the dip. Well, if you wanted to buy the dip. We can see here 990 was the first spot today where you would have even wanted to think about buying the dip. And of course, we come down there and we get our nice. Uh, all right, I think I got it loaded here. Okay, finally got it loaded. All right, so we're on the five dollar increments. Now, again, it's very obvious here the market starts the day at major liquidity. So if you're somebody, there is no way in this planet that you are buying right in front of this major liquidity. Again, this is a cardinal sin for my traders. You never, ever buy the dip in front of major liquidity. That is huge no-no. So in this case, imagine anybody today that was trying to buy the dip right here in front of this major 235 liquidity. Well, they got literally dumped on, dumped on. So, But at the same time, if Tesla would have went up, it would have absorbed this 235, got support on it, then hey, then we would have had the green light. But we never, I repeat, never enter a position, a long position or calls right in front of major liquidity. Because, again, that's our that's our short, that's our short, you know, short uh, scalping strategy. So, again, you know, so with that said, you have to wait for the major liquidity to be absorbed. And then that's when you get your confirmation. Now, as far as trying to catch a falling knife here, again, this was a major falling knife. You can say, oh, I want to buy it here at the 1020 liquidity. OK, or I'm going to buy it here at the 10. It's, that's fine, but for me, for me, what, whenever I want, whenever I really like to buy the dip on something like this, is when it's very, very large liquidity and there's really very little to anything behind it. So in this case, we can see here 990 was the biggest, by far, the biggest level level of liquidity. And of course, we came down to it, bounced off of it, came down to it, bounced off of it. And when I start seeing this right here, when I finally start seeing liquidity come in above, and of course, in this case, really, once you got this bounce, this is where this is where I get excited about uh, buying the dip on something like this. Big liquidity down here, and then I start seeing liquidity for it to push to. Because if there's not major liquidity above, then I know that there's really nothing for it. The, the gravitational pull of that liquidity isn't strong enough, so I know it more times than not, it's not going to last. And this right here was a prime example of it. You get this initial bounce here, but if you look up here, there's no major. Do you see any green or you know 
or uh, orange or red. No, no, was, this ain't enough. This this ain't enough to get it get it up there, you know. But at the same time, it comes back down here, finds more buyers around this liquidity, and then this starts coming in. So that tells me that oh, okay, there there is something for this. There is something for it to tractor beam and push to uh, now. So in that case, yeah, that's that's how I uh, that's how I I like to take advantage of something whenever it's a falling knife. But and again, prime example here. It's dumping, dumping, dumping. There's nothing up here. Nothing. There's no, why would, why do I want to, I don't want to buy no dip here. The, uh, no, there's none whatsoever. All I see here is it's coming down. It's absorbing liquidity. And what are you starting to see? Ab liquidity absorbed. Start getting rejection candles up underneath it. Uh, that's telling me it's going to the next major liquidity below. And sure enough, that's, uh, that's exactly what, uh, that's exactly what happened. So again, your probabilities, again, are not, the highest probability strategy is not buying the dip on dumps like this, okay? The, the only way you can have a high probability of success with this one is if you correlate it with the SPY. So, because I always tell them three out of four stocks are going to move with the SPY. They're going to top with the SPY, bottom with the SPY. Now, again, they can outrun it, but when you talk about finding tops and bottoms, the SPY is... Yeah, it's the big dog on the block. So if you can learn to find tops and bottoms on the SPY, you can find tops and bottoms on stuff like, because again, stocks like Tesla, NVIDIA, Facebook, all that, again, they're very, very sensitive to how the SPY moves. So with that said, if you can become, if you can become good at finding tops and bottoms on SPY, which for us using algos and also book map, I mean, that's, yeah, those, those two are, yeah, are literally the holy grail for t finding tops and bottoms on uh, on the spy. So, um, so with that said, I'm not going to buy Tesla until I'm very sh very confident that spy has you know spy is that major liquidity and it's more than likely going to bounce. Because again, if not, you're going to find yourself buying a 14 layer dip, and that can be very 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 dangerous dangerous and very very costly. So, with that said, it's a uh, it's not something that I, I really recommend. But again, if you are going to buy the dip at a major liquidity level like this, catching a knife, again, keep your stop a dollar fifty-five, you know, a dollar fifty-five below um, the major uh, major liquidity. Because so, again, that's going to keep uh, that's going to keep give you high, you know, a high probability of uh, of success if you're going to do it like that. But again, like I said, that's you know, this is like my fifth favorite book map strategy is buying at buying the dip. At major liquidity on something like this, like I said, it's like I said, it's it's way way down the list. You can do it if if you do it with uh, with the spy, but like I said, it's it's very 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 risky to uh, to say the least. So anyway, hope uh, hope that answered your uh, your question there. But yeah, like I said, Tesla Tesla did not look good uh, did not look good today whatsoever. So okay, uh, yeah, uh, He uh, has a few uh, few questions in here. Um, so basically, you're doing the same uh, for uh, a reversal or a bear, bear market, um, exactly the same uh, uh, process, it's just reversed. Yeah, so take, for instance, our short scalping strategy or our momentum, our momentum strategy to the upside. Okay, so whenever it's going up and it absorbs the liquidity and it gets support on it, once we start seeing those support comes down, wicks off of it, bam, that's confirmation that it's pushing up, heading to the next major liquidity. Well, in the same way, it's the same way to the downside. So, for example, whenever we see when we see a major level of liquidity get absorbed, so in this case, Tesla, so it comes down, it absorbs this level, comes back up, because again, it always retests the major level. It's like I said, it's that's one thing that you can guarantee on. You're gonna, you know, you're entering in front of the liquidity here. You can all be guaranteed you're gonna get a pull back to it to retest it. So, with that said, uh, we get a resorption here, comes back, retest it, and then look at it. We start getting these these wicks, these wicks off of that, and that's telling me, hey, more than likely this thing wants to continue heading down because again, we're rejecting on the major level of liquidity, and where is it likely going? To the next major level of liquidity, which in this case is 980, comes down to 980, comes down to 980, and well, we start getting support. Okay, so it, it absorbs it, but at the same time, it starts getting support on it. So that's confirmation that more than likely we're going to hold. And there, if you want to, you know, here, you start getting, you know, on one of the, these, this candle or that candle, you want to enter here, stop loss just below the liquidity, back below here. That's a high probability entry. Okay, but that didn't happen here. 
that these two are much different. Like I said, you're getting projection wicks, you know, candles wicking up, you know, uh, candle wicks below off of this major liquidity. That's telling me she wants to go lower. Whereas down here, I start getting bottom wicks and support candles. That tells me that, hey, more than likely we're going to get at least a short term bounce in this uh, in this area. So anyway, so hope. Uh, OK, great. Yeah, hope that hope that answered your question. Yeah. Uh, H.E. also um, had a follow up question here about um, uh, what are the components of your scan in deciding which stocks to trade each day? OK, so when it comes to finding the play, because, again, that's that's what I always tell people. It's, it doesn't do you any good to be able to find all these plays after the fact. It's can I find them during the day whenever it's actually time to make money, make money with them. So now and I'll be honest with you. I'm a little lazy whenever it comes to keeping an eye on my scanner because, again, it's so easy for us to get locked into SPY and, you know, just trade it all day because because <laughs> the options are so good. And, you know, when you got the liquidity and the uh, when you got the liquidity and you have the the algo levels, the algo levels to trade off of um, prime example right here on SPY. You know, we uh, we had some nice algo levels here that we were looking anytime we get a concentration of algo levels. We're always looking for a nice. A nice pop and anyway this was actually one of our uh, this arrow right here was actually in our one of our entry areas so anyway so we uh yeah told them to uh get out of there at 455 to be on the safe side so anyway so we love uh love trading spots so as far as the screener very simple um here on trading view you just pop up the stock screener and you go over here to um let me see here you'll come over here to top gain or how, whichever top gainers for the day, you'll hit that, um, have that have that set. And then for me, uh, the things that I like to set as far as my columns, I want to have change from the open percentage, change from the open just dollar amount. Okay, and then also want to have this for the pre-market because again, a lot of times in the pre-market, I love I lo the easiest money to be made in the pre-market, in my opinion. Because again, my big thing too is I don't want anything that takes a lot of my time. I want to be able to, I love these book map strategies because I can show up to the market literally five minutes before the open and, you know, do, you know, quick scan and I'm ready to go. It's like, I don't need to do all this DD and all this research and all. It's like, no, I get, I play what the market gives me every single day. I don't care if it's, you know, Toys R Us stock or, you know, or Apple or wh whatever it is. I'm going to play whatever the market gives me that day, whatever has the major liquidity, and it's going to give me easy money. So, like I said, I have no bias towards any particular stock. Whatever stock is, uh, yeah, is pushing and running into major, running into major liquidity or absorbing major liquidity and coming back, getting support on it and playing to the next level. That's what I'm looking for. So with uh, with that said, you'll notice here on the scanner for today, um, car was number one, you know, so that that's why it was pretty much an easy target for me, uh, easy target for me today, because, again, I was on change from open or change from open percentage. And yeah, that that told me that that was the biggest runner. That was the biggest runner for the day. So I know that anything that's running a lot. It's going to, you know, not that it's not going to stop running, but I know that it's going to have plenty of pit stops on the way at major liquidity. Only way you can mess up is is if you just don't follow the rules of it. You know, you get greedy and, you, you know, you you don't take your profit and then you just let it go back up and absorb the liquidity and get support on it and, keep, and it runs away from you. I mean, that's that's the only way that you, you know, and if you do that, then you probably don't need to be trading if you can't follow just very, very, very simple rules. I mean, my my 11 year old could, you know, I could I could teach this stuff to my 11 year old and. You know, that, that's that's how simple it is. So with that said, that's how I scan change from the open change for the open percentage uh, on the top gainers. And that's how you easily, easily just, you know, click through and then you'll find. And then once you see something that's running, I see I see that it's run a lot. I'll pull the book map up up on it, find where the major liquidity is at. I'll set an alert, you know, about two dollars, two dollars in front of that level. As soon as that triggers, bam, you know, I go in there, put orders ready to go and yeah whether that be an option or shares and yeah like i said it's uh yeah it's pretty uh pretty pretty simple to say the least okay uh let's see um uh, let's see we got another question here barboza uh does the stock price volatility change the general rule of the 155 stop placement or entry front run of 25 cents nope nope that is those are locked in stone hope that hope that answers that for you 
yeah yeah so have you uh gaspacho is asking if you've if you've done uh this kind of study uh or um does it work only on stocks have you tried it on uh, the es or nq or crypto oh yeah it works on everything because again like i said we're you know my my two primary day trading channels the um, one this is the you know one of my channels this is is totally dedicated to the short scout strategy and then the other one is our spy spy and es um, so yeah, we're using the same, same thing for spy, um, uh, you know, the spy and the ES we're using our, um, let me get this, uh, let me get my screen right here. So go back to yesterday as an example. Um, so we're using, we're using algos. So again, these lines, all these lines, I'm sorry if it's a lot of cluster for you, but again, I need all of this on my chart because like I said, I, I want to know where every every key key level is at. Um, with that said, these algo levels here, you know, we're using these in accordance with liquidity to give us super precise entries on on the spy. Because again, as you can see here, more times than not, we come within pennies of these levels. So we are using these levels to give us super super pro, you know precise entries on our spy options. And again, we combine that with liquidity because, again, when you combine, you know, these algo levels with the liquidity, major liquidity levels, like I said, we're, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's okay. that's it. Uh, just, uh, I think um, uh, we've answered um, all, all the questions here. Um, the uh, one one question I had uh, was, so on these pullback strategies after big moves like this, and you're, if you're trading options, um, uh, a lot of times, like, you know, the maybe the price goes down on the stock, but the option just kind of floats uh, and, and, and doesn't change. Um, do you find that happen uh, often to, your, to you? No, no. Unless you're in something that's just got something you shouldn't be in, you shouldn't be playing options in, uh, a, you know, a wide bid ass, something like that. Um, I mean, again, so are, you, are, you, are you trading options for, is it for the day? Is it for the week? Is it for the month? Yeah, so that that's uh, more times than more times than not. Um, now my spy in ES, a lot of times if 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 I'm okay with swinging, you know, there's a certain instance where I, you know I don't mind holding some. What I'll do is I'll go with my options. The way I like to play options is I don't want to have to. I don't like theta decay. I really that is one thing that's just really turned me off from you know options in the past and can continue to stay with them and. But at the same time, I have so many people coming into the server that want to just play options. So anyway, so again, it really it really helped me to just really just focus in and just really, really uh, play, uh, play a lot of options with them. Because again, um, with our options, the way I like to play options is I like to play spy options in the money to negate theta decay. Because for instance, when you go $10 in the money, when you go $10 in the money on spy, you negate all theta decay. You pretty much make that to where your your that is 100 shares, you know, 100 share or whatever your delta is, your you know, for that for that spy contract. So, which I really really like because again, that's I like to be extremely precise with my entries, my entries and exits on the spy, you know. And again, like I said, the algos are a big part of that. Um, so again, I don't want I don't want to be in a situation where I'm giving giving up a lot um, to be able to get in and out of out of plays uh, with my uh, with my options there, but but no no with the uh, the short scalp uh, the short scalping strategy no no the options like I said as long as you don't have just some crazy bid ass spread no the options work beautifully and uh, I mean it's not hard and it's easy to calculate if you're looking for a two dollar dump off that major liquidity calculate what your delta was let's just say hypothetically you have a fifty delta for that option well if you're expecting a two dollar dump you know that it's going to it's going to bring in you know a hundred dollars so again if you got a fifty delta option like I said you can pretty much you know subtract or add a hundred dollars to that contract and put your take profit somewhere around there if you want to you know set your take profit uh, to start with I personally I like to use trade station trade station allows me to put my entry order my stop loss and my take profit all on the chart, all for my options at the same time. So again, I uh, I really, really, really like uh, really, really like that because yeah, I don't want to be in a situation where you know I uh, yeah something something can get me there. So I like to be protected and have uh, have that uh, that capability. So yeah, trade trade station is my is my favorite uh, favorite broker to uh, to trade options on. Okay. 
All right. Well, uh, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Brett. Uh, interesting strategy and, uh, uh, you know, uh, nice to, to do uh, these kinds of events uh, uh, after the market here, uh, after Tom finished up. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got adding more and more events in here uh, and, uh, uh, you know, building a nice community. So uh, uh, thank you very much. Hey, I appreciate uh, appreciate it, Bruce. And uh, anyway, yeah, anytime, uh, anytime you want me to come back on and go over some of the uh, some more of the book map strategies, be be more than uh, more than happy to uh, to help anyone that's interested. Okay. All right, excellent. All right, so uh, yeah, good evening, right. everybody, and uh, we will uh, uh, catch up next time. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Bye bye.